All right, let's get a nice cold start to start the day. comment section if it was between a gt350 a 2013 to 2014 gt500 or an 03 cobra what would you guys get i know they're completely different but what would you guys get i mean cruising in six gear it ain't bad it's not bad at all video for this i actually was gonna park up at a spot and just talk but considering the fact that the wind is kind of outrageous today it was supposed to rain so i'm assuming these wind gusts are because of what was supposed to happen i'd figure a pov probably be better let me go ahead and roll my windows right now oh let me get away from this fucking truck because he's kind of throwing some stuff oh buddy now in this vid we're gonna be talking about a topic that I feel that every car guy and car girl doesn't really like to go ahead and bring up but for science and from the fact that I'm the type of person who likes to modify their cars relatively quickly and 
I know a lot of you guys in the channel are looking at buying GT350s or already have a GT350 and they kind of want to see everything that can happen or potentially go wrong when you do modify these cars from a bone stock standpoint because that's honestly what I feel like 99% of people that buys these cars are getting themselves into. These cars are stock when you buy them. Most owners don't do anything to them and this new generation of, you know, car enthusiasts, we like to modify our cars, you know, sooner than later. I mean, all my friends when they buy cars from the first 3 months, it's either full bolt-on or boosted, like seriously. So, I want to go ahead and explain all the money that I've spent within 2 months of ownership. Now, I got this car in January the end of January and right now it's like the end of March now theoretically all this would have went on within the first month but waiting for parts it is what it is now I've spent no joke six grand on this car already and I've had it for literally two months um, now in my defense two grand of that I don't have on the car right now but it is a necessary upgrade that I'm telling you guys right now, every GT350 owner is going to have to do this at one point or another if you do not want to keep it stock, especially if you bought it stock. The first modification that I did do to this car, which I believe is 110% worth it, was I upgraded from the stock manifolds to some long tube headers. Long tube headers are going to wake up the 5.2 liter Voodoo. It is hands down one of the best modifications you can do to this car if you are looking at a first mod or if you're trying to stay in A, that is definitely the best mod you can do to this car. It is going to increase the horsepower, the torque, and with long tube headers, and I'm gonna get to it later on, with some other supporting mods, this car will be faster than a stock Hellcat, which I think is ridiculous that an NA52 with just literally two mods can be quicker than a Hellcat. Now, I bought Stainless Works long tube headers. Um, you guys can get Cooks. You guys can get Corsas if you can find them. You guys can get American Racing. They're all going to be around that $2,000 to $2,200 price range now I bought mine brand new unfortunately I was looking to buy a set of used headers but just the type of platform that we're in there really aren't that many used sets going around and if somebody is listing a used set of headers for sale it sells instantly there's always some local guy that swoops them up within like an hour of them being posted so I have to go ahead and buy new it is what it is but if you're looking at headers $2,200 is going to be around that middle ground what you're going to spend. Now, again, it is 100% worth it. I do recommend you guys going ahead and doing that immediately. Now, the second most expensive purchase I've had to make for this car, which I actually don't have on the car right now, is an upgraded clutch. If you guys are looking at doing headers, and it's funny because this is the same advice I gave all my two valve and new edge brothers. If you're looking to do long tube headers on these cars and do it properly with a tune, um, you're going to have to upgrade your clutch. The stock clutch on these cars are good for stock horsepower and nothing more than that. I know there are some anomalies of guys boosting their cars on stock clutches, but let's be honest guys, the guys that are still on stock clutch that are boosted are probably the guys that put a Whipple on it, has a bigger than stock pulley, tuned on 93 and it's just driven to car shows on weekends once a month parked up and there may be you know one third gear pull where the guy revs it out to maybe six grand and shuts it down i don't really consider that driving the car and i can guarantee you if you were to go ahead and whipple a stock gt350 um on the stock clutch e even just bone stock just slapping a whipple on it on the stock clutch it's gonna fail within five days i can guarantee you that so i have to spend two thousand dollars on getting a mcleod rxt 1200 now the issue with these clutches on these cars and i'm talking about all clutch brands there really isn't a middle ground that you can go to right you either buy a stock replacement <laughs> or you have to buy a thousand horsepower clutch 
or a 2,000 horsepower clutch. There ain't really no middle ground, and it's they're all around the same price. Obviously, the stock replacement is like what a thousand dollars, and then they jump to two thousand dollars, and then they jump to four thousand dollars. So you don't really have that much play. You just have to kind of buy a clutch that can potentially like bulletproof your future setup. Now, obviously, I do plan. I do plan on boosting this car. So an RXT 1200 just makes sense because it will support the horsepower that I can foresee this car being at at a decent amount of time. Obviously, when I do go ahead and do what I want to do with this car, I'm gonna have to upgrade the clutch again just for drivability reasons. But the RXT 1200 is a great clutch if you are looking for something that is gonna be strong and supporting no lift shifts at the upper RPMs because that's what destroyed my clutch. You guys can probably tell if you guys haven't looked at my channel. I drive this car very, very hard. Well, not really very hard, but I enjoy the car, right? I like to no lift shift it. I like to take it to Mexico a lot. You know, I like to go ahead and just run it, you know, on the street. It's a true, it's a true street car. So the stock clutch definitely was not going to be handling that amount of abuse. So I have to go ahead and upgrade that. That's like $4,000 right there. Now, something else that I had to go ahead and do with this car, um, obviously when you do, woo, and it turns green, hell yeah, but at least I got to hear the downshifts. Now, something else that I had to do with this car, obviously once I did the long tube headers, is I got a tune. Now, if you have E85 in your area, a tune on E85, I'm telling you guys, it is 100% worth it on these voodoos, man you are going to unlock the potential. My car right now makes around like 520 wheel horsepower with the Header Z combo. And again, it is quicker than a stock Hellcat in a straight line. I mean, a car that isn't even built for straight line is quicker than a Hellcat, a boosted Hemi. <laughs> NA. I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. That literally doesn't make any sense, but it's well worth it. I recommend you guys going ahead and getting long tube headers with an E85 tune. Depending on you know where you are, the tune can range between literally 500 to like, I'd say 600 bucks. So I had to go ahead and tack that on for modifications. Now, something else that I did when I went ahead and started modifying this car, you know, during its first batch, a performance upgrade that did upgrade my cold air intake now I have a JLT cold air intake I do believe that the stock intake is just as good if not better than the JLT I don't really believe you have to upgrade to a JLT intake that's just gonna be my honest opinions I did it because I saw a lot of other owners with the headers E and they do the JLT combo but I don't really think you need to go ahead and do that that's gonna be about 350 bucks that you can keep in your pocket if you want to upgrade it if you have the money to do so go ahead but I do believe if somebody were to race me or you know take it out and run up against you know the cars that I went up and ran against I ran a bunch of cars in this thing already Hellcats 10 speeds ZL1s um, 392s trucks you know the texas trucks out here i do believe if they just had literally long tube headers and an e85 tune their car would perform very similar if not the same maybe should even maybe even better than mine so you could probably keep that 350 bucks in your pocket and you can use that on a set of upgraded tires now this kind of goes back to that bone stock you know mentality when going ahead and buying one of these cars my car, because it had low miles, I mean, 10,000 miles really isn't a lot, um, especially on a 2016 uh, GT350. It had, uh, literally, it still had the um, Michelin Pilot Super Sports. Now, if you guys are familiar with like track tires, if you're familiar with performance oriented tires, the Super Sports are not in production anymore. They stopped production of the Super Sports. Uh, they are now replaced with the Pilot Sport 4S's, which are a very very good tire but to the fact that how i used this car and i needed that extra traction i went ahead and upgraded to a set of mickey thompson et street ss's 
the stock diameter 305 35 18 and these are absolutely amazing now these are going to run you about a thousand dollars for the rears if you were to go ahead and upgrade to some pilot sport 4s it's going to be around 980 dollars so it's the exact same price point but I do recommend you guys going ahead and doing that if you are going to do the headers and e-combination if you have the stock tires because you guys can look through my older videos these cars below those pilot super sports out the water i mean this car it, it's honestly like uncontrollable if you were to do a 40 roll a 50 roll a 55 roll or a 60 roll i mean the car is going side to side it's spinning it's real bad and obviously spinning ain't winning and it is dangerous so i recommend you guys going ahead and upgrading your tires immediately after going ahead and starting modifying because it's just not gonna hook up you're gonna need the upgrade and you're gonna need something that has a little bit more grip but that's pretty much how i spent like six grand on this car like between headers cold air tune tires i mean a six grand right there y'all including the clutch pretty crazy if you ask me i mean i'm not upset about it because the car performs how i wanted to perform but it kind of shows you how expensive this is compared to like building you know a new edge mustang because that's kind of what i came from previously i mean six grand in, in a new edge mustang i had my car boosted like my car was bone stock i had bought a used blower fuel pump injectors clutch for six grand this car i'm just you know a headers e-car for six grand with some supporting mods so and what you have to prepare yourself to get into uh when you decide to pick up a shelby gt50 if you don't want to keep it bone stock but at the same time it is worth it because you can make all those glorious sounds all right so i'm done with my little joyride and i was not kidding the wind is crazy right now man <laughs> i don't know what's going on like i'm about to fly off this is ridiculous i can't even open up the door how bad this wind is gosh But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like on the vid, subscribe to the channel, turn those post notifications. Let me know down in the comment section right now if you guys think that the amount of money I spent is kind of ridiculous at like what, technically two months of ownership or if you think it's justified. Honestly, I'm really happy, no regrets, and uh, we're gonna work from here. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. Deuces.